Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Now before we get today's lecture started, please remember to access your free quiz and preview our cool nifty new study guides, not here on YouTube. Click the link right up here at any time during this video. Alright guys, let's begin. Now that we know what's wrong with the patient, what are we going to do about it? So always ask yourself, what is the main patient outcome goal? Well, in this case, we need to increase cardiac output, which is going to increase oxygen to the body. So we use A, B, C, and D drugs. These guys do two things, so please write this down. Guys, these are the hallmark cardiac drugs. You will always show up on the NCLEX, so write these down, guys. These guys calm the heart and drop the blood pressure or the heart rate. And they all do it in different ways. It's kind of like having a big toolbox, so we just choose the right tool for the right situations. Now guys, we're going to do a real quick overview, but we go for a deeper dive and break this down to more detail in our pharmacology course. Now our first A is for ACE inhibitors. These guys end in pril like lisinopril. These guys drop the blood pressure and take pressure off the heart. So guys, remember A for ACE inhibitors is A for antihypertensives. And lisinopril ends in pril. So you can say it's like a chill prill for the heart. Less work, less pressure, ah, it's relaxing. So remember, beta blockers, they block beats in the heart by slowing it down. It's kind of like pumping the brakes on the heart. So remember, beta blockers block the beats like pumping the brakes. So we slow the heart rate down. Now C is for calcium channel blockers. Remember, calcium calms the heart. Our famous ones here ending in D-pine like nifedipine or Zem, brand name for cardizem. So guys, remember D-pine helps the blood pressure to decline. And Zem like cardizem is kind of like Zen yoga for the heart. It's so calming to the blood vessels and the heart and in result, the blood pressure drops. So remember C in calcium channel blockers is C for calming in the heart. Now D for digoxin, our cardiac glycoside, this guy gives a deep contraction. This is also known as increased contractility, and it also slows the heart rate, known as negative chronotropic. Chronos meaning time, so negative time, less beats per minute. So remember the D in digoxin is D for deeper contraction. Or we can say digoxin, because it digs for that deeper contraction. But guys, caution, the three most common test questions always include, number one, checking the apical pulse for 60 seconds prior to giving, Number two, checking the potassium levels to see if they're normal between 3.5 and 5.5. That's a huge priority. And lastly, monitoring for digoxin toxicity. Guys, anything over 2.0 digoxin level is huge. And usually vision changes are the first sign of toxicity. So again, any patient with an apical pulse less than 60 beats per minute, or any potassium less than 3.5, or any toxicity level over 2.0, guys, don't give the medication. Hold the medication and report your findings to the primary provider. Now the last D is for diuretics, which help diurese the body, aka dehydrate the body. And all of this decreases the blood pressure. So drugs like furosemide or hydrochlorothiazide, now these both end in "-ide", so think the body is dry. They dehydrate the body and drop the blood pressure. Now these guys are potassium wasting diuretics, meaning they dump potassium from the body and into the body. So guys, please be sure to educate your patient to keep that potassium intake high. Teach those patients to eat green leafy vegetables like spinach and fruits like melons, bananas, and others. Now if drugs don't manage the condition, then surgery is our last resort, LVAD. Click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.